Welcome to the video. Make sure that you have subscribed. Press that bell to make sure you get the notifications. And I hope you'll like and share as well. I hope you checked out my last video, which I began my introduction of how to use Adobe Audition. Uh, by the way, here's the link so you can check it out. And if you follow and watch this video, it will not only help you if you use Adobe Audition, but hopefully will give you some ideas. Some, it's really the basics of using your recording software, your DAW. So much of what I say is applicable regardless of what you use, although the user interface may look slightly different. So in the last video, I, I talked and went over the basics of setting up and using your digital audio workstation, your DAW, your DAW, your recording software. And as I mentioned, I use Adobe Audition, and not, not, not saying it's the only one to use or the, it's necessarily the one you should use, but it is the one that I use and have used for nearly 20 years now because I used it prior to my life in voiceover when I worked in radio. So what I wanted to do in this video is simply take what I talked about and actually do it for you and show you what it will look like in real life. So let's just simply walk through the steps because I think by watching me do it, it will help uh, the, the entire thing to make more sense to you as you set up to record on your computer and with your chosen digital audio workstation, DAW, DAW slash recording software. So as you can see here on my desktop, here is, uh, here is Adobe Audition. And so the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I have my input and my output set up properly. Input and output meaning your audio interface is feeding audio into your computer. It's taking it from your mic and putting it in the computer so you can record it. And that your recording software is actually feeding the audio back out to you so you can listen in your headphones or on speaker monitors, um, if you're using that. I personally, when I'm doing voiceover work, I exclusively use headphones. I don't use monitors, speaker monitors for voiceover, unless I'm producing uh, a demo. Personal preference, you can do, I'm not saying it's the only way to do it. You can do whatever works best for you, but it's the way that I do it. Now, if you're using a USB microphone, you're not using an audio interface. So the microphone itself becomes the interface. So uh, what I'm going to do is go into Adobe Audition and under the Adobe Audition pull down menu, there is a preferences option. I'm going to go to that and I'm going to go to audio hardware because this is where we select the input and the output. Now. As you can see, here's a default input, default output, and there's a pull down menu, and it will give you the options that are available to you on your computer. So what you see on my computer will not be exactly what you have on your computer because I may use a different audio interface than you. I have other devices on my computer than you do. So you want to find the one that matches your microphone or your microphone input. So one thing that we would all have is a built-in microphone. So if I wanted to record through the built-in microphone of my computer, I would simply select that. Now that's not going to do me any good. For voiceover, I want it to come from my microphone. My microphone is plugged into my audio interface, which is the uh, Universal Audio brand. It's a Thunderbolt device. Uh, it's called an Apollo Twin. And let's see here, device changes can modify. Okay, yeah, no problem. You don't need to show me that again. I want to continue. Okay, so I, I want my interface, which is the Universal Audio interface as my default input and my default output. That means my audio will go from my mic into my Universal Audio interface, out from my Universal Audio interface into my headphones. Again, if you're using a different audio interface, if you're using a USB microphone, it may say something different. So you need to select the device that you're using to make sure you're getting the audio in from your microphone and that it's going out into your headphones. And that's all I'm going to do here. Now, obviously, as you look at this menu, there's many more options to be chosen. But what I'm showing you are the just the very, very basics. You should be able to set this up and leave everything else as is and it work. Um, now, you may find little glitches along the way where you have to do modifications and you have to dial some things in. But most of the time, this will get you to where you want to go, at least to start. And then as you want to learn more and you have more time and you can do more modifications, so be it. But that's that's how we're set up right now. So I'm going to click OK. Now, if you use a, a Windows machine, I'm obviously using a Mac. It might look slightly different. Some of the options may be slightly different. But the things I'm talking about will be the same, whether you use Windows or a Mac. So now... I know that my audio is going to go into Adobe Audition from my microphone because I set the input that way. And I know the audio that I play will come back to me into my headphones because that's the way I set it up. All right, so that's the first thing. Now, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that we have good audio levels. 
Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press the record button. The record button will allow me to obviously record, but it's going to give me a few options on the front end. I can give it a file name, and I'm just simply going to call it test. And then we set sample rate, channel, and bit depth. I talk about this in my previous video, so I'm not going to spend much time now, but I'm going to set it up at the default parameters that I use, which is 44,100 hertz for sample rate, mono, and the bit depth will be 16 bits. So that's my default. Unless a client asks for something otherwise, that's what I use. That's how I set it up, and I'm going to click OK. Now I'm recording. As you can see, I'm recording audio. It's showing up. If it's not showing up here on the screen, when you do it, then you're doing something wrong and go back and check your input and make sure that everything's okay. Now, the next thing that I need to do is set my audio level. Now, your audio level will be set by your audio interface, whether that's your USB microphone or whether it's a box like I have that my microphone's plugged into, the Universal Audio Apollo Twin. And because I use Universal Audio, I have the option uh, of controlling that through the software that comes with it, which is right over here on the right-hand side of my screen. Now, I, uh, I can control my input and output through this little, there's a little knob up here that I use my mouse and I can turn it up, I can turn it down. Again, you're going to use your interface to do this, but what you need to do is read a script at the volume and level projection that you'll be doing your actual audition or your project and set your level so that it peaks. I like to do mine so it peaks as close to minus 3 dB as possible without going over. If it's a little under, let's say it's, you know, minus 2, minus 1, no big deal. If it goes a little bit over that, no big deal. If it's too quiet, remember from my last video, you introduce too much noise into the recording. If it's too high or too hot, you possibly introduce distortion and overmodulation into your recording, and you don't want that either. So let's uh, put my headphones on here, and I'm going to pull up a script, and I'm just going to start reading, and I'm going to watch my levels here. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, I can tell you right now, see how low it is? I'm peaking at right around minus 15 or so. So I'm just going to bump that up a little bit. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, this child is living proof. Okay, can you see? Oh, see right there. Now I'm peeking over. I'm peeking a little bit over minus three. But when I'm reading the script, life has its best chance when all your specialists work together. Billings Clinic, where it all comes together. Okay, it peaked at about minus one. That's a little bit too much. Let's pull it back just a little bit. Life has its best chance when all your specialists work together. Billings Clinic, where it all comes together. Now, when you get to this point, you don't need to upset. Don't spend an hour trying to figure this out. You're just trying to get a rough idea. If it, you know, whether it hits exactly at minus 3 dB or not is immaterial. The point is you don't want it to be going much over or much under it. You know, you want it to hover right around there. So that's all I want. I just want it to hover right there, minus 3 dB, give or take. And that, what I've got looks good. So we're good. So now I have a good level. Let me stop the recording just a moment. So. I've set up my interface. I know I've got the proper input output. I've now tested my levels. I've got a good level right now. I know that this will provide me the cleanest audio possible, minimizing any uh, additional noise that could be introduced, and also uh, making sure that I don't get any distortion or overmodulation, which we don't want, where you know where the, the audio breaks up. That's overmodulation in very simple layman's terms. I'm not an audio engineer. I can engineer, and I've done it for years, but in terms of all, I just want to make this as, as layman friendly as I possibly can. So once you do that, you are set up and you are ready to record. So all I'm going to do, let's, I'm going to record, and I'm going to um, it, make a mistake or two, if not accidentally, at least on purpose, so I can show you how I go about the auditing process. So what I'm going to do right now is just, I'm going to delete everything I've put on here. There we go, blank slate, and here we go. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, after discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, this child is living proof. Life, ha Life has its best chance when all your Life has its best chance when all your specialists work together. Billings, Cl Billings Clinic, where it all comes together. Okay, so now what do we have? What are these little, see these little spikes? I made those by clicking my tongue 
You can use a dog clicker, you can clap your hands. When I make a mistake, I pause for a moment and I create a, a spike in the audio so that I can easily go back and I see exactly where my mistakes are at. It makes my editing much faster. Now, there's also, again, I mentioned this in my previous video, there's a technique called punch and roll. If you want to learn that in Adobe Audition, you can do that. This is a technique that I use. I can, it allows me to work very quickly and I, that's, this is what I'm good at. So I'm sharing with you what I do. So let me go back and just show you how I edit. Back to 22 weeks. After disc, let's take out what we don't need at the beginning, select and delete. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks. After discovering, okay, I start again, so let's delete that first part. Here we go. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, this child is living proof. Life, ha Life has its best chance when all your, Life. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select with my mouse the beginning of the phrase where I made the mistake. They're mowing my lawn outside. Can you hear that? Let me close my whisper room up so it's not a problem. One of the reasons I love my whisper room. And then I select up to the point where I do the pickup and then I hit delete. So now it's fixed. Living proof. Life has its best chance when all your specialists work together. Billings click. Billings click. Delete the mistake. Billings Clinic, where it all comes together. And there. And then it's done. That's how I create very simple marks. Now, yeah, I mean, you can insert markers. I'm just, this is what I do because it's quick and it's easy. And that's how I do it. You can do it however you want. But I just want to share with you the strategies that, that I use because I really try to boil things down to its essence. I don't want to know more than I need to know to be successful at this. I don't want to know everything there is to know about Adobe Audition. I don't need to, I don't need to spend the time uh, or the frustration trying to learn something new when I know the basic things that I need to do to get my work done. That's my philosophy because I want to spend, the things that pay me are marketing and recording voiceovers. Those are the two things that pay me. So I want to spend as much time as I can marketing and recording voiceovers. That's what makes me profitable. Not spending time, you know, hours just, just to know, you know, learning everything there is to know just so that I can say that I know everything there is to know. Not to say that there aren't things worth learning. I'm not saying that, but I think you get where I'm coming from. Keep it as simple and streamlined as you possibly can. Now, let me just share a few, a few tricks that you can use here. Uh, if you want to do some just quick cleanup, sometimes you'll get little mouth noises, minor mouth noises, crackles and pops and such. I don't think what I did here was bad. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, this child is living. But even that, even though I don't really hear anything, there are, you know, it, it could be smoothed out a little bit. And something that I, I always apply, apply a little bit of decrackling to my, to my voiceover. And with Adobe Audition, they have a nice uh, default setting. When you go under the noise reduction setting, under the effects, effects noise reduction, select click pop eliminator. And I just use the default setting. I hit apply and it just, it's like taking fine grit sandpaper to wood. And it just smooths things out. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, this child is living proof. Life has its best chance when all your specialists work together. Billings Clinic, where it all comes together. All right, so there you've got a nice, basically cleaned up recording. I'm not getting into the breaths at this point. Uh, that would be just a little bit more advanced. But in terms of setting up, getting started, recording good solid audio at good levels that sounds good, that's in a proper format, that's what we have here. Now, when I want to save the file, I just go to File, Save As, and I can pick the format. Usually, WAV and MP3 are the two most popular formats. WAV is probably, for me, eight times out of 10. That's what people are going to want. And then I can save it as a WAV file. There it is. If I want to change that WAV into an MP3, I just hit Save As. I change the format from WAV to MP3. Now I've got an MP3 version and a WAV version of the video. I know I moved kind of quickly through this, but I would encourage you, if, if you want to learn the basics, and you're just kind of getting started and it feels overwhelming, go back and watch this video over several times and follow along while you're on your computer and your DAW. Because if you can master these basics, it will go a long way toward helping you be successful in voiceover because we all have to be our own engineer. And if you can master these basics, it will allow you to begin auditioning and recording projects immediately.
Hey, thanks again for checking this out. I appreciate it. and want to thank a big special thanks to Whisper Room, who's a sponsor of the channel. And um, as I've mentioned before, that's what I work out of. That's why it doesn't bother me, you know, when the lawn guy shows up or when people are outside working or when airplanes fly over. It gives me a controlled environment in which I can work. So many things are out of our control. And if you can control an element, especially when it comes to sound that you're dealing with around your recording space, then you should jump on that. And that's the reason that I've used Whisper Room for about a dozen years now. And uh, I've recorded thousands and thousands and thousands of projects in here. And it's been a real lifesaver. Again, thanks for checking it out. Don't forget, subscribe, hit the bell to get notifications, share, like, and I'll talk to you again soon.